Hi everyone. Good afternoon. I'm sorry for the late uh, or for the delayed start because there is a power interruption. Apparently, uh, lahat tayo ay naka-experience ng power interruption this afternoon. So, kababalik lang. That's why. For those of you who can make it to this live lecture discussion, please do so and kindly inform your classmates also. Uh, well, they may not join, but of course you have to watch the replay when you have time because what we'll be discussed today is part of your major examination. So again, I'd like to welcome, good afternoon to all of you. Konti na lang guys. I think after this discussion, we will have um, one to two more topics. So that means we're just going to have two more lives. And then after that, we'll wrap up uh, the course and then have the final examination. So, konting tiis na lang. Okay. By the way, um, naririnig nyo ba ako? <laughs> Kasi kaninang nag-live ako sa isang class ko, hindi nila ako naririnig. Kasi naka-mute daw pala ako. Can you guys hear me? Okay, so thank you, J. Mark Mendoza and Jessa for answering that question. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you can hear me. So um, I do not know yung mga iba kung hindi nila ma-access ito. Maybe I could just send, I will also send the PowerPoint presentation in our group chat so you guys can read them, but it's still much better if you can watch this on uh, live or offline you know kasi pwede niyo naman i-save yung video natin so sa mga nahihirapan mag-access ayun ay maganda sana na i-save na lang nila so they can watch it uh, even offline you no know? uh, i understand kasi sometimes kahit ako ay nahihirapan din sa ano sa access sa internet dahil medyo mahina na sa barrio kasi ako so and i'm sure marami sa inyo ang nasa barrio din so i i am not actually obliging you but i am encouraging you to join at least or watch the replay of our discussion okay so yeah i think we are 79 like what i said this is supposed to be 200 plus but we never reached that that uh, number so kindly advise your classmates to please watch the the replay of this live discussion so they can catch up with our lesson so we were not able to have our class yes that the last week that's why i'm doing it now but uh at least maipon yung time no, na mag-discuss tayo online. Kasi this is really hard. Na-try ko na dati ito last semester sa inyo. Nagbibigay lang tayo ng uh, module and still nahihirapan kayo and you want me before to explain it online. That's why I'm doing it right now. Okay, so yeah, maybe you can help your classmates who cannot go online and try to explain to them. Okay, so at the moment we have 83 viewers. So again, Welcome to all of you guys. This is just a continuation of what we discussed last time on assessment in the effective domain. But before I formally start, by the way, 
Uh, may I request those who want um, the internet, the Wi-Fi and USB, kindly send me a chat uh, later after the, um, what do you call this? After our di online discussion, send me a message via Messenger using my uh, Albert GC class account. Doon kayo mag-send ng message. Yung nanalo na tatlo, ah. I think yun na lang tatlo ang walang price. And make sure na meron kayong, um, anong tawag dito? Kung meron kayong Gcash account, isend nyo sa akin yung Gcash number ninyo. Or kung wala naman, try at least BDO account. Okay, so I can transfer the amount to you at kayo na yung bahalang bumili. Ano? Kasi ako medyo nahihirapan din ako na mag-purchase online lately. So kung mas mabuti na isend ko na lang sa inyo yung pambili ninyo para kayo na mismo yung bumili. I think uh, malaki-laki yung dalawa. Ha? That's 999 pesos. Ano? And then yung USB is just around... 200 plus. Pero siguro ang isi-send ko dyan ay mga 300 pesos na lang. Okay? So again, kindly tell those who won doon sa ating uh, tatlong prices na yon. Dalawang Wi-Fi, one from BTV that I think, and the other one from BSE, and then there's a winner of USB OTP. So yun, ibibigay na natin yung mga yon. Okay? I am very sorry for the delay. And also, may I remind yung winner ng plants, kung natatandaan nyo pa yung dalawa na yon, the plants are still with me. The other one is doing perfectly fine. It's so beautiful. And the other one is just okay. So, <laughs> so kung sino yung nanalo doon. At sabihan nyo rin ako kung ayaw nyo na yung plant para makarir ko na yung plant na yon. Ano? Kasi I, I really love the plants. Or... Or maybe I can pay na lang ano, eh, the amount for that plant. Kasi maliliit sila na nakuha ko. So if I'm not mistaken, those plants are worth around 250 to 300 pesos. So yung dalawa na yun, kung gusto nyo, just let me know. So I, can, I will just pay you uh, in cash instead of getting the plant if you do not like to get the plant. Okay? So enough to that introduction. All right, let's start now. Let's continue. So for today's topic, we're going to look into the components of attitudes or some of the components, uh, related concepts to uh, the affective domain, I mean, okay? Some related concepts to the affective domain. So there are a lot, which I think I discussed already last time. We have attitudes, cognitions, motivations, self-efficacy, and so on. So those are the things that we are going to discuss. And then I am going to show you also um, the instruments that or assessment tools that we can use to assess the affective domain. Kung maalala nyo, diniscuss natin yung mga iba't ibang uh, assessment tools in the cognitive domain. So we talk about traditional traditional tools, di ba? like your paper and pencil test, and many others. Okay? So, yun yung pinag-usapan natin. So, meron din tayong mga tools na pwedeng gamitin for the affective domain. And, and we're going to discuss that also. All right. So, we start with attitudes. So, attitudes are defined as a mental predisposition to act that is expressed by evaluating a particular entity with some degree of favor or disfavor. So individuals generally have attitudes that focus on objects, people, or institutions. So um, there are so many concepts that are attached to attitudes. You know? uh, examples of these are like cognitions. Meron ba tayo dito? Ayan. We have cognitions, affect, behavioral intentions, and evaluation. So we'll talk about attitudes ano, dito. Sabi niya, it's a mental predisposition to act 
that is expressed by evaluating a particular entity with some degree of favor or disfavor. It's your like sometimes we are saying your attitude towards a person, your attitude towards an object. Okay. It's how you favor or disfavor a certain person. So for example, uh sabi nila, yung attitude mo when you're dealing with people, if you dislike uh, the person, you will show a different, a negative attitude towards that person. Okay? So, sa education, it's very important that we talk about attitude because like what we said, we are shaping our students to become better people. Not only intelligent people in terms of the way how they think, in terms of concepts, knowledge, or ideas, we want also to shape them uh, in terms of their attitudes. So, ang gusto natin na pag nagturo tayo ay holistic, you know? holistic yung development ng estudyante natin. Dinadevelop natin yung mind nila, and at the same time, we are developing their heart. That is why, pag nakakakita, when you will become teacher, you will understand this, you know? Pag isa kang teacher at may nakikita ka na nagmi-misbehave na estudyante mo o kaya medyo bastos, hindi maganda yung pinapakita niyang attitude, nakaka-hurt yon as a teacher. It's not because you do not like the student. Ang nakaka-hurt doon is it's as if wala kang naituro sa kanya na kabutihan. So, so nahurt most the mga estudyante kapag uh, nagsishow ng hindi magandang attitude yung isang estudyante, o kaya minsan nang babastos, dahil reflection yun nung feeling nung teacher, it's a reflection kung ano yung nagawa niya. So ibig sabihin, wala siyang nagawa dahil hindi na-change yung estudyante. Like what I said, ang gusto natin ay magkaroon ng holistic development ang ating mga students. Okay? That's why it's hurtful some, sometimes, ano, or most of the time, on the part of the teacher. Pag nakakita ka ng ganong estudyante, yung parang, parang sinabihan ko naman na ito dati, parang tinutukan ko naman na ito, parang uh, maganda naman yung halimbawa na pinapakita ko sa kanya, pero bakit parang ganon? So, ibig sabihin, ha, baka may kulang sa akin as a teacher. Okay? Now, on your part right now, since you are students, hindi nyo to magigets. Ano? Pero once nabaliktad na yung position, ikaw na ngayon ang teacher, dun mo marirealize na, oh my God, ito yung ginagawa ko dati sa teacher ko. Oh my God, ganito ako dati. And the funny thing is, pag naging teacher ka na, ayaw mo na din na ng mga estudyante yung mga ginagawa mo dati. Okay? Uh, sinasabi ko ito dati sa mga estudyante ko na yung mga ginagawa nyo ngayon, gagawin yan sa inyo. And the funny thing is, ayaw nyo na gawin yan sa inyo. So parang some sort of a karma or a cycle. Ano? Uh, you're doing it to your teachers and you, as a future teacher, your students will be doing that to you also. And it's a cycle. Ano? Yung mga gustong maging teacher. And alam nyo, yung mga naging estudyante ko na teachers na ngayon, they would tell me na, Sobrang tama yung sinabi mo dati, sir. Natatawa na lang ako at naalala ko na yung ginawa namin noon ay gagawin din sa amin at magagalit kami. So, ganon. Ano? So, it's it's really uh, a cycle. And, and that's something that you have to watch out for. Ano? So, at sabihan nyo sa akin, o chat nyo ako kung may time kayo mag-chat later at teacher na kayo, na oh my God, sir, yung sinabi mo sa assessment and learning, totoo nga. Ganon. So, like yung cheating, I know a lot of you are cheating now. And when you will become teacher, you don't like your students to be cheating. You know? So, so ganyan yung mayayari. <laughs> so, if you want a good karma, if you want a good karma, huwag yung gagawin yun para hindi bumalik yun sa inyo later on. Alam nyo, marami yung mga first time, lalo na pag uh, mag-demo mag teaching kayo, May mga umiiyak, ano? May mga umiiyak na mga practice teachers natin kasi hindi nila kaya yung akala nila dati nung estudyante sila, sila ang batas sa classroom. Nung naging naging practice teacher sila, mas batas pa pala yung mga estudyante nila. And 
eto ang hindi ang mahirap. Pag teacher ka na, hindi mo pwedeng sagutin yung estudyante mo. Uh, hindi mo pwedeng awayin. Okay? So, you, kaya minsan umiiyak yung mga practice teachers. Iniiyak na lang nila. Or sometimes, may mga iba na hindi nila kayang pigilan yung emosyon nila, sinasagot nila yung estudyante. Na, magiging dahilan kung bakit ikukol na yung attention niya. Okay? Kasi bawal yun. Ano? We cannot do that. That is why we are trying our best as teachers na to, to develop a good relationship but professional relationship with our students. So kayo, uh, kapag kayo ay, kapag malapit yung teacher sa inyo, make sure na yung level na yon ay intindihin nyo yung teacher na professional level. Okay? Especially within the confines of the school kasi yun ang kailangan natin i-maintain. Okay? That's just an additional uh, chika para sa inyong lahat, just in case, ano, na lahat kayo dito ay mag-proceed later on sa practice teaching. And I hope that all of you will become teachers. And please, 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 ngayon pa lang i-practice nyo na kung paano maging teacher. Ano? Yung mga gusto nyo, yung mga ideal uh, uh, character na gusto nyo sa teacher, yun na yun dapat na ina-acquire din ninyo kasi magiging teacher kayo later on. So, alimbawa, gusto nyo na si Sir Kalibo ay uh, mabait, okay, hindi nagagalit. So, dapat, i-practice nyo na rin yun. Okay? Dapat mabait na rin kayong estudyante ngayon. Hindi rin kayo pasaway. Ganon. Para ma-practice nyo na. Because you cannot acquire those overnight. It will take time. It takes process. Parang yung maalala nyo, it takes time to characterize a certain value. Okay? So, dun sa pinag-usapan natin nung last meeting. So, now, you practice it. Okay. Alright, so let's go back to what I just said. Yung mga components that comprises attitudes. So, we have cognitions. Pag sinabi natin cognitions, these are our beliefs, theories, expectations, cause and effect beliefs, perceptions relative to the focal object. Okay. So, when we talk about cognitions, this is not the same as feelings, but just a statement of beliefs and expectations which vary from one individual to another. So, in other words, our attitude is affected by our beliefs, by theories, by expectations. Okay? So, naapektuhan sila. Yung mga paniniwala natin, nakaka-apekto sa ating attitude. Diba? Kasi sabi natin sa attitude kanina, it's it's on you fa uh, you favor or you do not favor so depende sa beliefs mo depende sa expectations mo depende sa perception mo towards the person for example so if your perception towards a person is not good so feeling mo ano siya mataray siya yun ang perception mo therefore your attitude toward that that person is not also good so ganun so it's affected by cognition Okay, and then we have... O, oh, nasa na tayo? Parang kulang to. Cognitions. And then we also have here... I think... Sana tayo napunta. Ayun, nawala. Wait, guys. Attitudes. Okay, I think I wasn't able to include it here. But the next one would be affect. Okay? Uh, okay. I'm, I'm very sorry. Ano? Hindi ko na-include dito sa PowerPoint natin. Yung pangalawa. I thought it's here, no? So the next one is cognition, uh, affect. Okay, well, the affective component refers to our feelings, okay? With respect, so has something to do with feelings, with respect to the focal object, such as, ano mga feelings? Like, we have fears, whether in, ano kaya, um, liking, or pwedeng galit, or anger. These are feelings, okay? 
towards the surf, as the, the object or towards the person. Okay. So for instance, uh, let's say the color blue evokes different feelings for different individuals. Okay. Or maybe red. Okay? For example, it's an object. And sometimes when we see red, it evokes a different feelings. Sa inyo, pag nakakita ka ng red, it's festivity. For others, it may be danger, fear, yung mararamdaman nila. Okay? So, yun. So, iba-iba tayo uh, ng, ng effect or feelings na tinatawag natin. So, uh, it has something to do with fears, liking, or anger towards an object. Okay? Depende sa iyo yun. All right? And then we have the next one. We have behavioral intentions. Tansya guys, ah. Hindi ko na-include dito. So, when we talk about behavioral intentions, uh, these are our goals, our aspirations, and our expected responses to the attitude object. Okay? So, behavioral intentions. So, sinasabi dito that our attitudes is affected by our Goals, yung mga gusto natin marating, yung aspirations. That's why you see people uh, who are persevering, okay? Because of their goals, because of their aspirations, okay? So, yun yun. So, the, it's effect, attitude is affected by our behavioral intentions. And then, we also have here evaluation na tinatawag dito. Evaluations are often considered the central component of attitude, okay? So, um, it consists of the imputation of some degree of goodness or badness to an attitude object. So, when we speak of a positive or negative attitude towards an object, we are referring to the evaluative components. So, anong ibig sabihin yan? Evaluations, of course, of functions of cognitive affect and behavioral intentions of the object so it is most often the evaluation that is stored in the memory often without the corresponding cognitions and affect that were responsible for its formations okay. so ibig sabihin, it's how we evaluate the a person for example okay whether we perceive it as to some degree of goodness or badness. So yun yun. So we evaluated. Kaya ito yung pinaka-central uh, component ng attitude. How you evaluate a person or an object okay, would depend on how your attitude towards that person or an object. Okay? So th those are the four components that affect our attitude. Okay, so yun. Kaya, importante na malaman natin ito. Kasi, pag nagturo tayo, we need to know. Sabi natin before, before you start the school year, when you will be teaching, you need to know your students. Know what are their aspirations. Know what is important to them. Know what do they not, do not like. Know their culture. Their beliefs, alamin mo yung mga yon, okay? Para, it will help you understand their attitude, okay? If you don't know these things, it will be very hard for you to understand a certain behavior or attitude of a student. Mahirap, okay? Minsan, tinatalakan mo na yung estudyante, galit na galit ka na sa estudyante, chinichismis mo na sa ibang teacher na yung estudyante na yan, ganito siya, ganito. And you do not know na... Meron palang ibang pinagdadaanan tong estudyante na to, ano? Uh, pumapasok lang pala siya sa school to escape what is happening at home. And you do not do that. Nung sa school, kinakawawa mo pa siya. So, wala nang feeling of security sa bahay, wala na ring feeling of security sa school. Na supposedly, secured yung mga estudyante sa school. So, kayo, Huwag kayong agad-agad uh, manghuhusga, lalo sa high school, ano? 
uh, it's really hard no? to nagturo ako sa high school ng three years and well uh, I'm lucky because most of the classes I handled ay mga science class pero kahit doon diverse pa rin yung, yung ugali at saka yung attitude nila kakaiba pa rin so kailangan intindihin mo nang mabuti bakit siya nag ganito bakit ganun yung ginagawa niya so it's a lot of hard work when you become a teacher it's a lot of hard work but it's fulfilling very fulfilling kung may mga estudyante na babalik sa inyo later pag tumanda na kayo sa pagtuturo hindi yung mga estudyante mo sa college kundi mostly ay mga estudyante mo noong high school sila yung babalik sa iyo but if the experience of these students sa iyo ay hindi favorable then malamang hindi babalik yung mga yan. So ang goal natin ay may mga bumalik na estudyante sa atin mag-thank you. Kayo ba ay binabalikan nyo yung mga teachers nyo ng high school? Or meron ba kayong teachers sa high school na binalikan or binabalikan at binibisita bago pa mag-pandemia? Meron ba kayo? O nakulong na tayo lahat sa pandemia at hindi na natin nabisita yung mga teachers natin? <laughs> Kasi ako... Yung mga binibisita ko na teachers ko ay high school teachers. Ayun. So, alas si Raj Pagatpatan, wala daw siyang teacher nung high school na gusto man lang balikan. <laughs> why? Why oh why, Delaila? Ayun. So, yun. Uh, maybe because of, well, you have a reason, ano? Pero ako, even at my age now, I still go and visit my teachers like when i am nagpo-post ako ng mga plans ko and then yung high school teacher ko na retired na mag-comment i like your plan i have no choice but to give the plan ano o kaya pag birthday ng isang teacher uh, sa Isabella National High School si Ma'am Ellie Awingan if you know her Gertrudes Awingan retired na din siya siya yung binabalikan ko like she's my nanay nung high school ako uh, so I always see to it na mabisita ko si Ma'am Ellie Awingan, if you know her. And pag birthday niya, at, 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 at may chance ako na mapuntahan siya, I would give her present. Like, I'll give her money or anything. And the same with my other classmates. Bibigyan din sila. Ayan. So, ganun. Ano? So, that's our goal. That's your goal also. So, if you might ask me, Hey, ikaw, sir, meron bang pumupunta sa'yo at bumabalik? Eh, kasi ang impression sa akin ng most students ay mataray, ano? matapang, uh, nakakatakot. Yan yung impression sa akin ng mga estudyante. But I'm telling you, I have a lot of students. Ano? I, actually, part ako ng GC nila until now. na graduate na sila. Yung iba, uh, kumukuha na ng doctor of medicine. Yung iba, naglo-lawyer na sila. And I'm still part of their GC na inaasar-asar ko pa rin sila doon. And they would visit me sa ISU dati. But, of course, most of them nag-aral kasi sa Manila. Kasi science class nga yung advisory class ko dati. But they still come or they still chat me. Nag-chat pa rin sila. Kachika ko sila sa Instagram. So, ganun. so yun yung goal niyo, guys. Ano? Wag yung... Nag, uh, ano, wag niyong isipin na dapat powerful kayo sa klase. You know, uh, the impression they have with me, I'm not trying to defend myself, but minsan natatawa na lang ako pag nagsasabi yung mga siyante na, taray, taray mo, sir, dati, ganun. Uh, I actually do not mean to be mataray or mean. It's just that medyo mababa yung pasensya ko pag obvious, tapos tanong pa ng tanong, o hindi mag-get. So, <laughs> so that's me. But I don't think, I don't take, ano, uh, things uh, personally. Kaya kung napapansin nyo, kahit pinapagalitan ko kayo sa GC, after that, wala na naman. Kasi, hindi, actually, hindi ko natatandaan niya napapagalitan ko. So, uh, pag ikaw ay tinandaan mo na napagalitan kita at galit na galit ka na sa akin, dugi ka. Kasi ako, hindi ko natatandaan na nagalit ako sa'yo. So, kung nagalit man ako, I'm just trying to redirect you from a certain behavior or attitude. So, that's just my way. Okay? So, if you know me outside, it's, it's just bad na hindi tayo nakikita face-to-face. But I could be as fun as anybody else can be face-to-face. But now, 
Yung tayo nakikita, hindi nyo makikita yon okay? But of course, bahala kayo kung anong perception. But of course, my goal still is I could change you into a better person, at least. Okay? All right, so why do we even have to study attitudes? Okay, well, attitudes... Ano man, dami yung comment pala dito. Ayan, sige. Yes, sir. Teacher ko nung sa senior high school. Sabi ni Bernardo Rodrigo. Yes, meron. Sabi ni Merlinda. Yes. Millet also said yes. Saraline said yes. Archie. Joy Vicente. Christopher. Si Reg lang wala. Naku, Reg. Bumalik ka doon, ha? <coughs> okay, isipin mo. Baka meron naman. <laughs> And most of you, ano? May mga teachers kayong babalikan. So, you go back, say thank you to them. Or kung may galit man kayo sa kanila, I think it's time to forgive. Because, like what I said, probably uh, they just want you to become better persons, but their ways is different. So, ganon. Ano? So, maybe you, you try to look things that way. So, why do we even have to study attitudes? Guys, kung may mga gusto kong i-share, mag-chat lang kayo diyan, ano? Ababasahin ko siya. If if there if you have a sharing like like yung teacher na babalikan ninyo, pwede niyo i-share dito kung bakit gusto niyo siyang balikan, ano yung mga nakita niyo sa kanya, or ano yung teacher na bakit ayaw niyo siyang balikan and so on. So you can just chat, ano? While I'm talking here and then I'm going to read it once I see them. So we study um attitudes <clears throat> Uh, because attitude can influence the way we act and think in the social communities we belong, okay? Uh, attitude can um, function as reference for forming conclusions and interpreting or acting for or against an individual, okay? Uh, individuals, a concept, or an idea. So for instance, you think about your attitude toward, let's say, drinking alcohol or smoking or gambling. Okay. Or perhaps think about your attitudes toward math. Marami sa inyo ayaw sa math. Uh, do this attitude shapes the way you, or shape the way you think and corresponding act? So, ganun, ano? Kaya importante. So, it will help us better understand our students. Why do they have this negative attitude towards, let's say, math, towards English? So, kailangan nating malaman yung mga yon for us to um, better okay? understand the way they behave and so that we know what intervention can we make. Ano? Yun. So, kailangan yun. Ayan. Sina Marjorie and Marvin just came in. Ayan. Good afternoon to you. So, ganun. Yun ka, ganun ka-importante. Uh, at saka may mga studies kasi na yung poor na performance sa schools. Uh, for example, in mathematics, are, are actually um, related to the students' attitudes towards mathematics. So in other words, pag negative yung attitude mo towards math, apektado yung performance mo towards uh, math. So yun yun. That's why we need to understand that. So if you're a teacher, If you found out that your student or your students have a negative attitude towards math, anong gagawin mo? Magtataray ka pa ba sa math class mo? Diba? Anong gagawin mo? Iteterrorize mo pa ba sila sa math class mo? No. Ang gagawin mo is to make your math class enjoyable. Okay? Lalong lalo pag face-to-face kasi madali magturo ng math. Guys, ang hirap magturo ng math na online. You know? Ako talagang suko ako sa pagtuturo ng math na online kasi sobrang hirap. Pero kung, kung face-to-face, ayun. Uh, so, yun, ang gagawin mo. Ano? So, kahit sa ibang subject, kapag alam mo negative yung attitude ng estudyante, halimbawa, yung estudyante, inaantok sila sa klase mo, boring, and everything like that. So, gumawa ka ng paraan. Ano? So, yun, yun. That's why you need to understand that. Okay? So, that is attitude. Okay? Do you guys have questions about attitude? So, importante yan, ano? Next, we have motivation. 
Okay, ito. Importante din ito. It is a reason or a set of reasons for engaging in a particular behavior, especially human behavior. Reasons may include basic needs or an object, goal, state, state, state of being, or ideals that are desirable. So when we talk about motivation, it refers to the initiation, direction, intensity, and persistence of human behavior. Theories that explains human motivations are the following, the need theory, two-factor theory, ERG theory. Okay? Um, pag pinag-uusapan natin, kayo, uh, matanong ko, what motivates you to study? May I know, guys? Uh, we see a lot of people who do not even go to school but are successful in life. But kayo, ano yung motivation ninyo? Bakit kayo nag-aaral? Especially now, ang hirap-hirap, ano? Marami sa inyo walang laptop. Marami sa inyo uh, napaka-ordinary ng cellphone. Marami sa inyo uh, walang pang-load. Uh, meron siguro kayong pang-load, ano? Pero baka ginagamit yung sa FB. <laughs> o kaya sa games. Ayon si Reg. Ayan. Ano to, Reg? Anong sagot mo saan ito? Reg, pagat patan. For me, sir, yung experiences po plus yung pagpapaaral po sa akin. Ayun yung motivation mo? Does that what motivates you? Yeah, I think isagot mo yan sa tanong ko na yan. Ano? <clears throat> so, yung pagpapaaral sa kanya daw. Ah, so, since pinapaaral ka, so gusto mong suklian, kaya gusto mong mag-aaral na mabuti. So, so that's what motivates you, ano? The effort being done by the people na nagsisend sa'yo sa school. And gusto mong mag-experience, yung makagina experiences. Okay? How about the rest? What motivates you? Oh, wala na yan natin iba. Yung nagbibigay daw ng allowance. Ayun. Sabi ni John, John Lloyd. Oy, may artista pala dito. John Lloyd. O espiritu pa siya. Tapos cruise o relative siguro kayo. May cruise, may espiritu. <laughs> yung nagbibigay daw ng allowance niya every sem. Ayun. So, yun kanyang motivation. Then yung isa, yung laging palala sa akin ng mga naging teachers ko noong elementary at high school na dapat makapagtapos ako. Okay, uh, so it's like some sort of a challenge from your teacher, and that's what motivates you. That's Joy Vicente. So we have Marifest. Sabi niya, yung situation po ng family ko now. Okay, yeah. Uh, ako din. <laughs> Nung ako ay nag-aaral, I know how poor we were. We were dirt poor. Uh, ang ibig sabihin ng dirt poor? Nakwento ko na yata dati ito sa inyo. Super poor. Like, we were super poor. Like, we live in a house na nakikita mo yung langit pag natutulog ka, na pag umuulan, ay hindi ka makatulog kasi tumutulo. So that's, actually, that's the house I'm living until I was 38 years old. 38? Ba? 39 years old. Yeah, 39 years old. Yun pa rin yung bahay namin. So pag may bagyo, tumatakbo kami sa kabilang bahay. And, and, and those situations that we had are actually what motivated me to, to keep furthering my studies, na rumakit, and everything. So ngayon, meron, kaming, meron na ako na ipatayo na maliit na house, pero hindi pa siya tapos. This is where I am living right now. <laughs> so, malaking factor yung, yung katayuan mo sa buhay. Ano? So, I hope you guys, tignan nyo rin yung gano'n. Ano? At huwag kayong panghinaan ng loob. Kung feeling nyo, mahirap kayo ngayon, no, mahir, mas, baka ano, mas maloka kayo sa kung gaano ako kahirap before. Pero, it did not deter me from, uh, you know, uh, uh, pursuing my studies and becoming a better person. So, yun. Sobrang hirap talaga na, ano, nangungutang kami ng baon, tapos nakitira ako nung nag-aaral ako ng college, naging katulong ako doon. <laughs> ganon, ganon katinde. So, wala. Basta, sobrang hirap. So, so yung kay Marife, whatever the situation of your family now, uh, it should make you a better person and it should uh, make you stronger. Ano? 
Huwag kayong pa, pa ano pa tatalo kasi mala, mahabang proseso 'yan. Hindi naman yung pag nakapag-aral kaya yaman ka na kaagad no. It's a long process and you have to stay put. Dapat nandun ka lang. Do not lose your track. And you will achieve what you want to become to have in life, ano? Uh, si Naiza Toribio to have a better future. So so Naiza is looking at the future. So gusto niya magkaroon ng magandang future so na mo-motivate siya. Sino ito? Ah, hindi estudyante ito. <laughs> Ayun. So, family. Kay Shakira. For me, sir, yung motivation ko is yung mga taong naniniwala sa akin at yung support na nakukuha ko sa pamilya ko, sir. Lalo na po yung ate ko na siya ang nagpaparal sa akin. Okay? So, that's good. And Merlinda also said, wala nang iba pa, sir, kundi po yung pamilya ko then yung situation ng buhay namin before and ngayon. Okay? So, see? Uh, mayroon tayo lahat na ano, motivation. So si Bernardo, yung family, uh, parents, dahil ang edukasyon lang ang kaya nilang ipamana sa amin, especially sa akin. That's right. Ano? Pare-paro tayo. We were in the same shoes. Okay. Si Shelly, family, nakamit yung dream and goals ko in life. Menchi, yung mga challenges and discouragements. Okay. And many others. Yeah. So those are the things that motivates you. So kanya-kanya tayo ng motivation. Okay? So see, our motivation, the motivation actually affects ano, uh, the things that we do in life. So dapat alamin natin if what motivates our students. Dapat alam natin yon. Not only sa example natin sa pag-aaral, in, in the class. So ano kayang nakaka-motivate sa bata na ito? So gusto ng bata yung yung ano laro. So bigyan mo sila ng laro. Okay? Pag nagturo ka. Ganon. So kaya nga sa part ng lesson plan may part doon na motivation. It's an activity that will motivate the students. But before we go deeper into that, okay, by the way, thank you guys for your inputs. Ano si Pamela, umabul siya diyan. Sabi niya family din. Okay, so yeah, it's good to know, no? Na, na, ano. Kaya huwag niyong iniisip na wala akong consideration kasi hindi ko na nararamdaman yung yung situation ninyo. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> Because I've been poor all my life. Like, we are poor all our lives. Uh, except, now, medyo okay-okay na ngayon. Mga three years ago, medyo okay na ng konti. Pero kahit poor kami, masaya kami. Hindi yung nag illusion kami dati. Ano? So, kung, kung poor kayo at malungkot kayo, yun ang masaklap. So, kung poor kayo, pero contented and happy, yun, okay yun. Okay? So, dapat ganun kayo. So, in education, motivation is a particular interest because ito yung, yung dahilan kung bakit natin pinapag-aralan ang motivation because it direct behavior toward a particular goal. So, yung sinasabi natin dati, no? So, kung ano yung... Uh, <clears throat> What motivates you uh, actually shows some behavior mo on that particular goal. Lead to increase effort and energy. So parang kayo. So parang sa klase, kung ang goal ng estudyante o ang kanyang motivation is to get high grades, then ibig sabihin talaga mag effort yan. Ano, ipopour out niya lahat ng effort and energy ta mataas ang makuha niya sa mga exam, na mag-participate siya sa klase, and so on. So, it can lead to increased effort and energy. Increase initiation and persistence in activities. So, sa klase, ayan, since education pinag-uusapan natin dito, ano, so, kapag motivated ang estudyante natin, then they would most likely participate in the activities. Okay? Enhance cognitive processing. So, yung pag-iisip ng mga bata, they would uh, think critically. Uh, they try to make judgment, discern things uh, reasonably. Right? Determine what consequences are reinforcing. So, sa motivation, if you know <clears throat> what motivation, what motivates your students, then you can determine what reinforces learning. 
sa kanila. Okay? And then, it can lead to improve performance. So, understanding what motivates our students can lead to an improved performance of the students. Bakit? Kasi, alam natin kung ano nag-motivate sa kanila, then we know what we can provide them. We know how to deliver our lessons. Okay? We know what materials we are going to use. We know how uh, to give them tests or activities. Kaya kapag bibigay natin yung, yung uh, alimbawa, we deliver our lesson in a way na mamomotivate yung mga estudyante, then may intindihan nila, nila, nila yung lesson mo and it will lead to an improved academic performance. <clears throat> okay? Alright, so there are two types of motivation. So, tignan ninyo kung alin dito yung motivation meron kayo. That's the reason I asked you earlier, what motivates you? So, we have two. One is intrinsic motivation. It occurs when people are internally motivated to do something because it is it either brings them pleasure, they think it is important, or they feel that what they learning is morally significant. So intrinsic, sayo, sa loob, ano? Ibig sabihin, ikaw. Uh, if you think it is pleasurable, kaya it motivates you. You think that it is important, that's why it motivates you. You feel that it is morally significant. That's why it motivates you. You are motivated to learn it. So it's all about you. Inner workings of you ang nagmo-motivate sa'yo. Now, as opposed to extrinsic motivation, uh, it comes into play when a student is compelled to do something or act a certain way because of factors external to him, like money or good grades. Okay? So extrinsic. So kung dahil sa magulang mo, that's extrinsic. Diba? Extrinsic yun. Dahil sa magulang mo. Sinabi ng magulang mo na mag-aral ka mabuti kasi yan lang maipapamana ko sa inyo. That is an extrinsic motivation. Okay? Or, uh, yun, uh, ano pa ba? Mag-aral ka ng mabuti para kapag may grade ka, bibigyan ka namin ng cellphone. That's extrinsic motivation. O kung matas ang grade mo ngayong prelim, o mataas ang grade mo sa ganito, o kung maipasa mo lahat ng subjects mo ngayong second semester, bibilhan ka namin ng Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G. Kung ang grade mo ay 1.75 pataas. So, di ba? So, that is an extrinsic motivation. Okay? So, that's motivation. Do you guys have questions? Regarding motivation. Anong brown out daw kinamar? Okay, that's okay. So family, family, family. Yeah, our family is actually our motivation. Ako din dati, you know, I actually, I can just do whatever I want if sarili ko lang iniisip ko. But if you are poor, you always look at your family. Uh, nakikita mo yung parents mo na, oh, nagihirap sila. Oh my God, ang tandana nila and they are still working for me. And I cannot even help them. So, isipin mo na, I'm, I have to work harder so I can help them. So, that's family. Okay? Sino itong mga ano? Ah, okay. So, if there are no more questions, guys, please bear with me. We still have a few to discuss. Ano? So, I, everything is clear. Now, we talk about self-esteem and self-efficacy. Uh, self-esteem is an individual, subje uh, individual subjective evaluation of his own worth. It com encompasses beliefs about oneself as well as emotional states like triumph, despair, pride, and shame. Okay, so when we talk about self-esteem, it's what we think about ourselves are either negative or positive. So, for example, ah, I am unloved. So, sobrang walang nagmamahal sa akin. Walang nagkakagusto sa akin. So, so that's, ibig sabihin, low ang self-esteem. 
pag sinabi mo, ay, I am worthy. May value ako. Kaya dapat ganito. Oh, that's self-esteem also. Or, I believe I am good in poetry. Yan. Sa tingin ko, magaling ako sa poetry. Sa tingin ko, magaling ako sa Mobile Legends. But not necessarily na magaling ka talaga. Pero yun yung tingin mo. So that's self-esteem. O kaya sabihin mo, I believe I suck at maths. Hindi ako magaling sa math. Yung hindi ko pa nasusubukan, hmm, di friend, dumbbell ako sa math. Naku, wag yung number na yan. Diyos ko, Diyos ko, mamatay ako niya, mag-nosebleed ako dyan. Pero, hindi mo pa naman natatry. Ano? So that's low self-esteem. Yun. Or, the other way around. Yung, Ay, best, ano, akit tayo sa bundok. Kasi ganito, mag-hiking tayo, mountaineering tayo. Kaya mo ba? Ay, ako pa, best, go! Pero never mo pa palang natry umakyat sa bundok. Pero, ay, kaya-kaya ko yan. So, that's self-esteem. Okay? Gora! Ganun ang sabihin mo kaagad. Even if you do not know if you can do it or not. Okay? Alright. So, next we have self-efficacy. This is a personal judgment of how well or poorly a person is able to cope with a given situation based on the skill they have and the circumstances they face. It strongly influences both the power a person can actually has to face challenges competently and the choices a person is most likely to make. So when we talk about self-efficacy, it has something to do with your skills. This has something to do with your skills. So when you say, I am good at math because you know that you are really good at math. So that's self-efficacy. So when you say, ay, hindi ko kayang umakit dyan sa bundok kasi sinubukan mo na dati at hindi mo kinaya, kaya bumalik ka sa baba. Okay? So alam mo na you don't have what it takes to uh, umakit sa bundok kasi natry mo na nga. So wala ka, hindi mo kaya. So that's self-efficacy. So it's your evaluation of what you can do or what you cannot do based on your skills okay so a person with high self-efficacy views challenges as things that are supposed to master to be mastered rather than threats to be avoided so knowing that you are not good in math uh, when we talk about self-efficacy you see it as a challenge so hindi mo tinitignan na na kahinaan mo yon na ay wala na may math ah oh, suko na ako dyan no since you know, kasi talaga alam mo na mahina ka, so you strive harder. You try to hurdle that challenge. You, know? you don't see it as a threat, but you see it as a challenge that you have to hurdle. Okay? Uh, a person with high self-efficacy are able to recover from failure faster and are more likely to attribute fa failure to lack of effort. So dito, since we talk about self-efficacy, that's knowing what you cannot do, if you cannot do thing and you failed on that, hindi mo i-attribute yun sa sarili mo na ang tanga-tanga ko talaga. Ano? Uh, you attribute it as, ah, kulang pa ako sa effort. Dapat level up ko pa yung effort. Para sa susunod, ay uh, hindi na failure. Ayun, triumph na. And they approach threatening situations with the belief that they can control them. Okay? So, kumbaga, if there's a threatening situation, if I will do better, if I will do this and that, then I can get out from this threatening situation. If I will study math every day, ask questions to my teacher if I do not understand it, then I am pretty sure that I can pass any math examination. So that is self-esteem, uh, self-efficacy. So that's self-esteem, self-efficacy. Okay. Did you guys get the difference? Hi to our viewers who are not my students. <laughs> I, I, I can see some viewers. Thank you guys for coming. Do you guys have questions regarding the difference between self-esteem and self-efficacy? I think there is none. 
Alang, yes, sir. <laughs> questions? Anyone? Okay, I think you have no question at all. Okay, let's just have a quick, quick, quick last topic. This is just very quick, guys. Assessment tools. So just like in the cognitive domain, there are also assessment tools that we can use in the cognitive domain. Okay. We can also use in the cognitive domain. One is self-report. Then we also have rating scales. Then we have the semantic uh, differential scales. Then we have Thurnstone and Likert scales. And then we have checklists. Okay. So when we talk about self-reports, these are just written reflections. Okay? It's the most common measuring tool in the affective domain. So what do you do? Uh, it just requires the students or an individual to provide an account of his attitude or feelings toward a concept or idea or people Okay, through a written reflection. So when your teacher tell, uh, tells you, write a written reflection on this and that. Okay, So that's a self- report because you are going to write in that written reflection about your attitudes or feelings towards that concept or maybe the movie for example or what was discussed in the class okay so usually is why i dislike or why i like mathematics why uh or mathematics or other subjects okay so the teacher here ensures the students write something which would demonstrate the various levels of uh the taxonomy in the affective domain okay gen sa ating self reports so again these are written reflections for rating scales naman a rating scale is a set of categories designed to elicit information about a quantitative attribute in social science so common examples are the likert scale uh, kung kayo ay sumag nagrate na ng mga teachers ninyo, di ba? Pinagrate kayo ng mga teachers ninyo. Nire-rate yung silang 1 to 5 o kaya 2 to 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That's a, a Likert scale. Yung 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pwede rin yun. Yung 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rating scale is actually a Likert scale. And that is under rating scale. So, you are going to select the number which is considered to reflect the perceived quality of a product or alibawa, yung teacher, ano? So kung alibawa, the teacher is well prepared when conducting a class. So re-rate nyo siya from 1 to 5. Okay, so that's an example of a rating scale. Now for the semantic differential scales, this one assesses an individual's reaction to specific words, ideas, or concepts in terms of rating them on Bipolar scales, okay? Bipolar scales, ibig sabihin may dalawang contrasting <coughs> rating. One is good and the other one is bad. Good, bad. And then sa gitna ay neutral. So, alimbawa, zero sa neutral and then papunta sa bad, one, two, three. One bad, two bad, three na bad ang rating. And then, sa other side ng zero, I one, two, three, pero good. So, kumbaga, yung three na good is super good yon. And then, may two pa na good, medyo good lang. May one na good, good lang siya. So, that's, 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 ano, that's semantic differential scales. May dalawang bipolar scale. Like, yung opposite na attribute, like bad and good. And then, meron sa gitna, which is neutral. So, re-ratean mo siya doon. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a sample sa GC natin, ano? And then we have the Thurnstone and Likert scale, okay? Uh, nabagit ko na kanina yung Likert scale. Yung Likert scale, yan yung 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ganon, na very uh, strongly agree, agree, disagree, ganon, uh, strongly disagree. So that's an example of a Likert scale. I'll also send you an example of a turnstone scale. Ano? Para makita nyo siya. So, kumbaga sa turnstone scale, 
of measurement ay may chine-check lang kayo. Put a check mark in the blank, sabi niya. If you agree with the item. So kung nag-agree ka, halimbawa, uh, the teacher comes to class on time. Agree or disagree. So yun lang. Yun yung third stone like that's an example, ano? So uh, I'll give you an example later on. And then we have checklists. Ah, uh, madali lang tong checklists. Pag sinasabi nating checklist, uh, ini-enumerate all the attributes and characteristics that you wish to see or observe relative to the concept being measured. So, <clears throat> for example, ang concept ay inter interpersonal relation, then you might want to identify yung mga iba't ibang indicators tungkol sa interpersonal relation. Okay? So, kumbaga, ang checklist, guys, ay parang shopping list. Di ba? Pag nagsishopping kayo, may listahan kayo. So, yun. Iti-check nyo lang kung ano yung present. So, halimbawa, <clears throat> bigyan ko kayo ng, halimbawa, uh, checklist for teachers. Ito yung attribute na gusto natin makita. Ask an interesting speculative question. Show a picture. Tell a little story. Or read a related poem to generate discussion. And interest in the upcoming lesson. So, kung ginagawa yun ng teacher, iti check mo lang. Kaya tinawag siya na checklist. Check. Then next, try playfulness, silliness, a bit of theatrics, <clears throat> like using props and storytelling to get attention of the students. Pag di niya yun ginagawa, wag mong lalagyan ng check. Okay. So, kung bago sa checklist. It's the presence or the absence of the attribute. Yun, yun. I'll give you an example also in our group chat. Okay, so that concludes our lecture. Sinasakto ko lang siya na one hour, guys, para ano, hindi kayo magreklamo sa akin. So, yeah, I hope you learned something today. And just like I promised you, I'm going to send you... <clears throat> Uh, examples of the assessment tools. So, are there questions or things that you would like to share? So, I hope by now you already realize how important uh, the effective domain is in education. It is equally important <coughs> with the cognitive domain. So kahit yung cognitive domain lang ang nabibigyan ng grade, ito lang yung nagdedetermine kung kayo ba ay magiging cum laude or hindi, kung kayo ba ay papasa, kung kayo ba ay magpo-proceed sa next stage ng inyong kurso, hindi ibig sabihin, yun na yung pinaka-importante. At the end of the day, ang import uh, importante ang affective domain. Kasi sabi nga natin, Kahit pa ang talitalino mo, pero hindi maganda yung behavior or attitude mo, hindi maganda ang, pan, ang, ang iyong uh, wala kang tiwala sa sarili mo, magre-reflect yan pag nagtrabaho ka. And people will dislike you. Okay? And you will be having a hard time uh, you know, working with other people. And we know that when we talk about work, we have to deal with a lot of people. Okay, so that's how important it is. So make sure that you when when you become teachers, um, dapat ay siguro duhin niyo na kayo ay isang magandang halimbawa at intindihin yung mabuti yung nakikita yung behavior ng inyong mga estudiante. You cannot just be ang angry <laughs> dahil ganon yung ugali niya no. Okay, dapat alamin mo. Kung bakit ganun yung kanyang ugali. Okay? Yan. So, yes. I will send you some materials later. Ano? But, of course, the materials I'm, I'm going to send you, wala siyang explanation. Ano? Uh, kasi PowerPoint presentation lang yan. So, huwag niyong memorize kasi hindi naman memorization halos lahat ng ating examination. Okay? So, guys, please, please, please prepare for your exam. Sige, hindi na Monday ang exam ninyo. Maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. So, ganun din. 24 hours na open yung examination. You can take it anytime. Pero meron siyang time 
limit. Okay? 90 to 120 minutes. I think that's enough. Sobrang haba na yun, ano? Uh, kaya, kaya minsan 2 hours yung binibigay ko for the exam, kahit maigse, because I am considering your internet connection. Baka mabagal. Alright, since there are no more questions, I hope you learned something today. Please tell me that you learned something today. Uh, para hindi, ano, uh, midterm yan, Elmer. <clears throat> and then, we will discuss the last two, then we'll have your finals. Mayroon tayong last two pa. Yung, may exin na lang yung dalawa. Ano? Uh, portfolio assessment and the grading system. And then we're done. So, two meetings na lang tayo. So, we can have another meeting this week. Okay? Alright, so, yeah. Any more question? Wala na ba? So, kung wala na po kayong tanong, that's it for today. Thank you guys for uh, joining me. And to even those who are not my student, thank you so much for joining me. And yeah, see you in our group chat. So enjoy the rest of the day. Have a blessed evening. Stay safe. Please do not go out. Uh, COVID is still real. Ano? Meron pa din. Maawa kayo sa mga magulang niyong matatanda. Ayan. So if, if, if it's not important to not, go out. Okay? So if you guys have questions, you know, just ask some questions. Thanks, Reden. Bye, everyone. If you have questions, you know what to do. We have our GC. Thanks, Marife. Thanks, everyone. I know you learned something today. You don't need to tell me. I know. I was just joking earlier. Thank you also.